Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Samuel Leeds and in this video I'm going to be answering all of your questions around property investment and there's quite a lot of questions last week around HMOs. A HMO is a house of multiple occupancy. This is just an absolutely incredible way to rent a property out on a room by room basis and receive two or three times as much rental income. However, there's always going to be little problems that come up and there's going to be questions around management, refinancing, valuations, tenants. So if you have those questions and you're struggling with a deal or you're just struggling to understand the concept of a deal, whether it be a rent to rent or a HMO or buying the buying process, the legals, I've done hundreds of HMOs over the past 13 years. I've bought them, I've packaged them, I've sold them, I've flipped them, I've controlled them. So I'm here on YouTube, just literally straight up answering all of your questions with no agenda. You ask the questions and I'm gonna answer. So if you enjoy my channel, please do me a massive favor and just help give back. It doesn't cost any money to do this. Just go ahead and hit the like button, that'd be amazing. And then more people will see this channel and it will help them in their property investment journey, which is what I'm about. My mission is to help people invest in property successfully. So let's see what questions we had last week. Hit the like button and get commenting your questions. And I'm gonna read your questions and I'm gonna answer your questions on next week's video. So go ahead, answer your questions, whatever it might be. Okay, so we've got a question from Waves who asks, he's asking about the commercial valuations on HMOs. Um, what are the things I can do to ensure I get a commercial valuation on my four bed terrace to six bed HMO? E.g. add extra stoves, en suites, etc. Um, so the first thing is, is why do you want to get a commercial valuation? Because personally, if I'm adding value to a property, whether it be a HMO or any property, the idea of wanting a high value is so that I can then borrow against the new value and pull my money out. So I'm assuming that that's what you're wanting to do, but I'd love to know a little bit more about what the plans are with the property. So there are lenders that will look at doing commercial valuations on six bed HMOs. That's kind of the minimum that they will do commercial valuations on. And the, as you say, the, the, the rooms need to be on suite rooms. If it's bigger than that, if it's like seven, eight bed, then very standard, it will be commercial valuations. So the first thing I would do is, if you are determined that you want to get a commercial valuation, is I would speak to a mortgage broker, someone that brokers all the different types of loans on properties, and ask them in this particular area, with this particular house, if I do this, that, and the other, will there be lenders that will give me a commercial valuation, and what will the rates be? Second thing I wanna to say to you, Waves, is, Try and make sure, with it being such a small HMO, that the bricks and mortar valuation alone is also gonna be where you need it to be. Because let commercial lenders of HMOs will also bear in mind the bricks and mortar valuation. So if you need any more help, hit me up on Instagram or come along to one of our free live training programs. But exciting times and hope you do well. All right, next question. This is Harry Harris. Harry Harris says, what's the simplest way to pay the utilities, such as gas, electric, water, and council tax, when you first buy a buy-to-let? And how do you make these payments during void periods when doing work or waiting for a tenant? Okay, so Harry, if it is a HMO property, then generally speaking, you will be responsible for paying all of the utilities the gas, electric, the water, the council tax, always. When the tenants are in or where they're out, you'll just pay it. That's part of the service for HMOs because it makes it convenient for the tenants to move in, to move out, it's simple for them, and they're just paying for a room. If the property is a family home, then you will pay the utilities and the council tax when there's no one living in there. Now, ideally, that will be never because there'll always be someone living in the property. But when what you have to do is you have to make sure that you take the um, meter readings. So when you first buy the property, take the meter readings. And then before you move the first tenant in, take the meter readings. Uh, also, just with, as far as the council tax is concerned, just make sure that you keep a record of when the tenant moves in and you've got their AST contract. And then that way you can inform the council as to when the tenant moved in, when they moved out, and make sure they don't charge you when they shouldn't be. And when the tenant moves out, take a meter reading, 
before the next tenant moves in, same story. So, I mean, that's really all there is to it. It's not particularly complicated. It's just something you need to have your finger on the pulse. If there's anything I've missed off in terms of utilities, let me know, comment below, and I'll do my best to help. Adam says, I want to rent an apartment and do Airbnb, but I'm having issues getting a landlord to give me a sublet lease. That's because a sublet lease doesn't exist. There's no such thing as a sublet lease. And if you're asking landlords for a sublet lease, you're gonna scare them away because not only does it not exist, if it did exist, it would be illegal. So Adam, before trying to secure an apartment on a sublet lease, find out the actual technical contract that you're gonna need, which will be a company let agreement. That's what you need. You're not subletting the property. Subletting is when you have a tenant that then puts another tenant in, unauthorized. You're doing a company let, a corporate agreement with the landlord. You're paying them a monthly rent. You're not living there, you're not subletting it. It's what hotels do. So you need to really understand the terminology because otherwise you're gonna scare landlords off. Ben Parkinson, is it possible to take over a HMO on a rent to rent with existing tenants in it? If so, how would you go about it? There's two ways you can go about it. First thing that you could do is you could say to the, uh, the landlord, look, there's six bedrooms, there's three tenants already in, and there's three bedrooms empty. You agree with the landlord what you're gonna pay the landlord. And then you take over the contracts. So you say to the tenants, I'm now the new point of contact, and then you renew the contracts where the tenants are now paying you. And then you then pay the landlord. So that's one method. The other method would be, to just let the tenants pay, continue paying the landlord, but then you just take that into account and you obviously, when you're reimbursing one another, you're just taking that into account. So every deal is slightly different. And if there's already tenants in, it might just need a little bit more planning and thought on where the payments are all gonna go. But this is something that I've done many times. And in fact, Amelia, who did the financial freedom challenge with me, she took on a property in Clapham. The tenants were currently paying the landlord. She took over the property and it all worked out beautifully fine. And now she's making 850 pounds a month from the property. So yes, it happens. Hope that helps. June Corriette, I've inherited a house. How can I use it to start my property business? I have benefactors. Um, probably if you've inherited a house, the chances are the house is probably not, it might, I might be wrong, but it's probably not gonna happen to be a brilliant investment opportunity. A brilliant investment opportunity would either be a house that's got a really super high rental demand, in which case, amazing. You should just keep the house, maybe refinance it and rent it out. Another brilliant investment opportunity for a house would be if there was added value to be done. So for instance, if the house had a piece of land at the side of it that you could potentially get planning permission on to really increase the uplift of the property. If the house is just a house, and if you wouldn't buy it now as it is, because it doesn't make financial sense, then it might make sense to just sell the house and then use the monies to invest from scratch. Bothered Now says, I'm finding it really hard to raise cash to get my rent to rent portfolio going. Of course I can earn work, but I feel finding and sourcing the money can be the more beneficial to me in the longer run, please any pointers. Yes, Bothered Now, you are absolutely 100% incorrect. Finding the money is not the hard bit. Finding the money is simple. The hard bit is getting to the point whereby you need the money. I wish I could phone you up right now. Guaranteed, maybe I'm wrong. If I am, you can let me know in the comments. But guaranteed, if I rang you right now and said, I've got 25 grand and I wanna give it to you, what are you gonna do with it? You wouldn't have deals and a clear plan and a clear strategy how you could invest that 25,000 pounds and really make it count. So in which case, you don't need the 25 grand. You need to get to the point whereby you need the 25 grand. That's the hard bit. And when you get to that point, the money always, always comes and it comes easily. Speaking from experience, don't worry about the X, Y, Z of not having the money. Worry about the ABC of not having the deals which you, where you would need the money on. All right, last question. Mahai says, finally, I managed to buy my first BRR property then I want to in Ipswich. What is your recommendation? To use an estate agent, to find tenants, or to do it by myself? What mistakes should I avoid? So great, you've got a BRR in Ipswich, well done. So if you've just bought this property in Ipswich and you're looking for tenants, presumably you've got to the point whereby you are buy, refurbish, refinance, rent. You know what, I'm gonna tell you a little secret. 
Buy, refurbish, refinance, rent is actually incorrect. That is not the order. The order is actually buy, refurbish, rent, refinance. Because you want to rent the property out before you refinance it. And the reason is, is because it will, it will help your valuation if there's tenants in the property because the lender will want to see what the rent is and it's gonna help the valuation. So what I'd say is you wanna make sure that the tenants are paying the highest rent possible. And would I recommend an agent? Uh, probably, yeah, sure. Mistakes that you could make would be letting a tenant move in, paying too cheap rent, and then the, the property gets downvalued because the rent's not high enough. That, I saw that happen recently with a guy called Paul. Um, I was speaking to him on Instagram, and he said that the rent wasn't high enough, what should I do, and it's really difficult. So get the t rent to pay the highest rent as possible, um, use an agent, make sure that you register their deposit, make sure that you have a gas safety certificate in place, um, make sure that the EPC, you, you know what the EPC is, because these are all things whereby if you haven't got them on file now, and then the tenant wants to, you want to evict the tenant, you can't if you've not got these things in place now. Use an agent by all means, and good luck. I hope that valuation comes in. What I'd be thinking about more than anything is how to put a nice valuation pack together for the valuer to show that I've pushed the value up as high as possible. Maybe that's for another video. If you've got questions, let me know below, and I look forward to seeing you guys next time.